Hello friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are excited to share with you um, a new concept, a project that we have partnered with Walters Gardens and Proven Winners. I introduced you to this last week on our nursery tour, the Easy Scapes. And Easy Scapes, in a nutshell, is a recipe for a garden that you can pick which recipe works best for your situation. And then it tells you not only what plants will go in there but also how to plant it how to arrange it so I know a lot of people because we deal with this all the time here at the nursery folks they want a beautiful space right they want to have a beautiful garden they just don't know where to begin maybe they don't know what kind of plants they want to have in there or if they do know the plants well then how do I arrange them how many do I need of each plant to make a really nice garden Walters came up with this whole idea of easy scapes. There's about, I think like 19-ish or somewhere around that, different recipes. You can go to their website. I have it listed for you here on the screen. It's very simple. It's easyscapes.com. You can search through um, by different recipes. And what I love is that Walters, they just didn't come up with this on their own. They ask growers and garden centers like us to develop these recipes. We developed three, and then there's other garden centers and nurseries across the country that developed their own. Now, Easy Scapes, again, is not too overwhelming because we only, the most plants that we can use is four different varieties. So we have three different Easy Scapes. Today we're going to be showing you how we are planting the shade one. This shade garden has four different plants in there. Now there are multiples of each plant, but um, it gives you this fantastic idea. So, for example, when you have an easy scape, you are going to have this great poster. We have two of these posters. This one will be, um, we're going to put it in a frame and it will be right here in this area, but it has an artist drawing or rendering of what the landscape would look like. And then it comes down and it tells you the four plants that you're going to be using. So today in the shade, we're going to be using the spot on pulmonaria. We're going to be using the dressed up um, evening gown euchre, nice dark foliage, the crested surf painted fern, and then a shadowland hosta. We're going to be using diamond lake today. So you'll notice that each one is a different color in, in the ink and it has a letter associated with it. So then when you come over here to the planting plan, those circles represent the different plants and that kind of gives you a layout for your bed. Now, if you're like us in this space, you can um, see it's not really like a true rectangle. It is kind of a little bit of a funky island shape. So on the poster, it has a QR code. And if you just scan that with your phone, it takes you directly to this website where these are and you will find an alternate layout and that is what we have um, used today. Um, in a little bit we're going to go over and show you the other two easy scapes but we're going to get this planted first. We are obviously underneath the pines here. This is a beautiful full shade area. If it gets any sun it is just dappled sun. It is not um, in direct sun at all but remember a shade garden in order to be considered shade has four hours or less of sun. So let's say you get three hours of direct morning sun, this would totally work. And depending on what zone you are, you're gonna have a little wiggle room there. Obviously we are North Carolina, a zone 7B, nice and hot and humid and sticky, especially today. Um, so these plants definitely need to go in the more shade. If you're in Wisconsin zone five or four, right? You could probably do a lot more sun. So you've got to, you know, think about it just a little bit, but this is definitely for the shade here in the south. All these plants will do wonderful. You will see we have the bobcat back there because we need to build this bed up a little bit. We have to expand it. So we have our great soil blend that has um, leaf litter and compost and pine bark vines in it. And we're just going to build it up. We're going to leave the plants where they are and shovel the soil around them. That way we will remember <laughs> Jenny will remember exactly where those plants are so I don't have to redesign the bed. Um, so that's what we're going to do is fill this in and then we will start planting. And once this is planted, then we're going to pop on over and show you two for the sun, a pollinator attractor and one for deer resistant.
got all of the soil additive shoveled out and filled in right here at the new bed. Um, obviously it's not, you know, perfectly level because that's okay. What we're going to do is I want to show you the different plants that we're going to use and then explain how we're going to plant them. Okay. So one of the things that I just really love about the whole easy scape concept and how they did it was that they're not on a good number of the plants they're not telling you specifically what you have to use for example the hosta it just says a shadowland hosta that shadowland is the series and there's like a gazillion different kinds of hostas within that series so today we're going to be using diamond lake but you can use whichever hosta one that your nursery has available or two that you just simply like so there's a lot of flexibility there um, now with the crested surf and the spot on obviously those are <laughs> those are specific plants um, but even if you don't have those you could still have that same concept and find a different um, perennial that you could use in there and then with the Euchara, it's the dressed up series. We're going to use the um, evening gown. If you don't have evening gown, black pearl would be a great option because it still has that nice dark color in there. And then it will tell you like what your ratio is. There's three, basically there's three of everything in this plan and then like two of the hostas or plant ratio, right? Um, and then also with the easy scapes the plan is is that you will have color throughout the season so early on in the early spring your spot on is going to be blooming then your crested surf comes in with its foliage and your hosta and its blooms and then the eucara will be later you're going to have foliage right all growing season but this gives you kind of that throughout the season something changing in there so what we have let's go through the specific plants we have the crested surf japanese painted fern and this is really fun they picked the pine needles out for you um you can tell this was in the shade for sure um crested surf is really fun because it has the little fringed edges on it um, it's different than any other painted fern that i have ever seen it does have some good height it can get 22 inches tall of course that classic japanese painted fern um, coloring on it but it's the tips that really make it fun again this is definitely shade here in the south uh, crested surf is hardy in zones three to eight extremely cold tolerant you're not going to have to worry about losing this um, over the winter because it is so cold hardy 22 inches tall and then about two feet wide we have in this planting bed we have let's see three six we have eight of them in here um, and we have them you will notice um, in kind of a group of three and a group of three i've talked to you about this a lot when we're planting is if you can put the same plant in multiples in a group it really stands out just like we have the pulmonaria the spot on we have three of them right here together then we did a fern another um, pulmonaria here so you've got those spaced out now spot on First of all, she's a little dirty because she got some soil on top of her, but it's all right. Now, spot on is a pulmonaria. And pulmonarias are a wonderful, wonderful shade plant. They will be, for us, definitely a semi-evergreen. So even in the winter, you're still going to see your foliage. But spot on, as you can see, got its name because it has spotted foliage. Nice green leaves with that kind of that creamy silvery whitish light green speckles on top and it does do the beautiful um, blooms in early spring and they change colors how fun is that they start off as pink and then they will change to a blue um, hardy in zones three to nine now they're going to be taller than they I mean they're going to be wider than they are tall i always get that mixed up in my head um, so they're going to give you nice full presence really going to fill in the bottom of the bed and uh, it's, it's a great one so the spot on we have that then we have what we're doing today is the diamond lake and diamond lake great hosta now i'm going to tell you you know how i keep it real around here here we are in middle of july north carolina hot humid sticky 
these hostas obviously still in the can they um they got a little bit too much sun and they got some sunburn they got scalded a little bit and some of their foliage is reflecting that that is okay we pulled them and put them in the shade soon enough we've got new foliage coming out of it but if you have hostas that that happens to maybe they're already in the ground so that may be a clue to you that they're getting too much sun. So in the fall, you're gonna to wanna to move them to a shadier location. If you're like me and they're in the can and you're getting ready to plant them or whatever the case may be, you can go ahead and cut these leaves off. Just go all the way back down to the base of the plant and you can cut it off and it will put out new foliage. So that's what the little brown spots are. It's too much sun, it needs more shade. So that's a clue for you. But Diamond Lake is going to be really fun because it's going to be 17 inches tall, but it's going to be nice and wide. It could be up to like three to four feet wide, really big. Um, and it is a blue hosta. I do enjoy my blue hostas um, and blue hostas do tend to be more shade lovers. The light, light greens can do more sun. Your blue ones need the more shade um, and it will have that really fun kind of corrugated leaves on it fantastic and hostas of course are really cold hardy zones three to nine all of these plants are very adaptable um, in your different growing zones so wide range of zones can grow this garden and then the last one we have is the dressed up series this is new i'm trying to find one that has a tag on it here we go um evening gown so when we trialed evening gown last year walter sent us these to trial um in my opinion, this is a replacement for black pearl. Black pearl, of course, we know and we love, can do sun or shade, but evening gown has big, huge leaves on it. Gorgeous color. Um, it's just kind of the bigger and better black pearl, in my opinion. It still can do sun to shade. They do tend to like a little bit more shade than they do the sun, unless you are in those cooler climates, hardy end zones, four to nine, and again, will be wider than it is tall, 12 to 14 inches tall, about 20 inches wide. But just, I mean, that such rich, rich, deep purple, almost black leaves on it. And then they will have pink flowers. So that is really fun. Again, this one will be a semi evergreen for us. It's not gonna be in all its glory in the winter, but you will still have presents. The hostas and the ferns will disappear in the winter time. Your pulmonaria and your euchara will be there even in the winter um, for us. So that kind of gives you a rundown on the plants that we are using. Um, we are not using the planting plan that is on the poster we went to their website because of the way this bed is shaped so we're using the alternate the other plan that they have for us there which is really of course the hostas because they're gonna be your biggest plants they are going to be in the center and then we planted with our lower plants all the way around now as far as planting yes i am underneath pine trees i am underneath a maple tree um, lots of trees here so we are gonna be competing with some roots. That is one reason why we brought in extra soil to build the bed up. Plus this is just fan, this is just fantastic soil to amend the entire bed that you will notice we did the entire bed, not just a individual planting hole. We do have our power planter auger um, because that will do a fantastic job of cutting through the um, roots here underneath and it is going to really going to um, aerate and till the soil so another great tip is to put your soil amendments on top and then dig your hole because when i come in here and aug i'm going to have my native soil mixed in with the soil amendments so that will be fantastic aug all the holes everything is going to get biotone remember biotone is your starter fertilizer that helps have healthy root system which is what we want um, and then once everybody's planted then we'll, of course we'll we'll figure out and kind of smooth out the bed with the top dressing if we need to add some more we will and then we will come back with the native pine needles and just kind of sprinkle on top because we are underneath these big old pine trees um, so use what you got pine needles are the native thing the natural thing they're free we're going to use them um, and then everybody will get really well watered in and 
then that'll be it. We just sit back and watch, watch them grow. This is not on irrigation, so if it doesn't rain, then we will have to water. And the first year is, is your most critical because you want to make sure that everybody's really well established. After that, it'll be a much more forgiving, but here we are in the nursery. We've got hoses nearby. Watering that is not going to be an issue for us. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, we are going to go uh, start auging some holes and get these babies in the ground. The shade garden from Easy Scapes is in. Everybody is nice and in. We got that great top dressing on, well watered in. Uh, that definitely is a key here in the middle of July when it's not on irrigation. Make sure that you water it well. Um, and so everybody's nice and snug. We are supposed to get some rain this afternoon, so that will be good. Uh, but you can see that every Easy Scape here at Creekside Nursery does have a display sign um, right there at the flower bed. So that way you can see exactly what plants are in here that has that QR code. All your information is right here in this lovely sign fantastic i am really excited with how this bed has turned out cannot wait to see how it's going to grow and develop these hostas you may have noticed and when i was planting them they were pretty root bound so i did get my hori hori out and i loosened up those roots pretty well they should take off getting in this fantastic soil all that great compost the biotone and water man they should just explode so that's going to do really well super excited about it now let me come over here let me show you not only do you have the gardens here at creekside but then let's say you like that easy scape and you want to shop it so we also have close by to each garden we have these displays where you can come in and get your plants still has that same um, style of a sign that easy scape for the shade tells you all the plants that are in there gives you that planting plan and then here we have the plant plants right below the sign so you can come in and depending on your space you can decide however many you want and it makes it really easy to shop and you can come right here and grab whatever it is you need i dare say also my sweet people who are living in apartments and condos or patio homes and you don't have big areas to put in whole gardens this would make a fantastic container arrangement you could get the largest pot that your space will allow and this would make a beautiful mixed container you would only do one of each and put it in there so don't think oh well i don't have a garden i don't have a big space open up 
that I can, I can plant this. I can't do that, Jenny. Honey, where there is a will, there is a way. This would make a fantastic shade container. Now, let's head over to the front of the greenhouse and we're gonna show you those other two easy scapes that we have. So here we are in front of the greenhouse and those of you that have been following us for a while, you will remember way back in the spring when we put these flower beds in, we said that this was gonna be a special bed. Well, it is a special bed because we have two easy scapes in here. First one, it is the easy scape to resist deer. I will preface this. Yes, if deer are hungry, they will eat anything. Um, this is for, um, deer resistant, not deer proof. There is no such thing as deer proof. Um, deer resistant. So we have in here, you can see on the sign, we have the summerific hibiscus. We have paint the town dianthus. We have um, one of the prairie winds perennial grasses, and then the serendipity, which is that ornamental onion. What we went with was the uh, pink Hibiscus, I will put it up on the screen because the name is just meant Rain rose. Evening Rose. Anyway, we'll put it up on the screen. So it is a beautiful pink. Um, we did do the um, Cheyenne Sky Perennial Grass. Then of course the Serendipity is in here. And then we did Fancy, the Fancy Dianthus. So for our bed, it made the most sense to do the three hibiscus in the back because they're nice and big and they will fill in and get really huge. And then we came in the center and put the grasses. So there's a total of seven grasses, two, four, six, seven. Seven grasses that will form a nice mound right here. And then we did a little swoosh of both the serendipity and a swoosh of the fancy dianthus. So that will be a fantastic full sun, deer resistant, give you lots of color throughout the entire growing season. All right, now moving on over here, we have an easy scape for pollinators. Now there were <laughs> just about a hundred different plants that we could have used in this bed, but we wanted to do something a little fun, a little funky, and a little different. We went with the Pyromania series of Nephothia. Red Hot Pokers is what you may know them as. The Pyromania series is really fun because they have all these great big electric colors. And I wanna show you um, what you wanna do with your Nephothias to keep them blooming. Because if you do this, they will continue to bloom throughout the entire season. So right here, we have this beautiful, this is Backdraft. And Backdraft is just a gorgeous ombre of yellow and orange. But you will notice right here that this bloom is an old bloom, right? It's a spent bloom. So what you wanna do is you want to deadhead these perennials. So you come in and you find, and you come down into the foliage where that is, because you don't want it like, you know, sticking up out of the top, right? And you just snip it. So if you will deadhead your nephophias like once a week, once every two weeks, just come through, then you can see back here, there is like, look at all that great brand new, lots of new baby buds coming up beautiful happy plants that are just gorgeous the bees love these plants in fact i see a couple i don't think jerry can get them <laughs> but i've got a honey bee and another little pollinator that they will shoot their bodies all the way up into the bloom so only the little tip of their bottom is sticking out they love these plants fantastic next we have the um rock and grow sedums. Now we did back in black because it's a really fun contrast. The sedums love it hot. They love the sun and these are going to be like late summer fall bloomers. So that extends your blooms into the season and they're going to give these gorgeous flower heads. Again, pollinators go nuts over them and that's really important is to have flowering plants late in the fall so that your pollinators can be fed throughout the entire season. What do we have for spring? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Let me tell you, we have the Cat's Pajamas Nepeta. This is um, a wonderful cat mint. Um, yes, if you have cats, they might be attracted to it, but this is um, Cat's Pajamas. I have it in the Gatsby Gal bed, a beautiful, fantastic plant. Um, that will be an early spring bloomer. Again, when it's done blooming, you're gonna come in here and you're gonna snip, take out your deadhead, deadhead those, 
because that way you can get another flush of blooms like we've got little buds right here. Um, so after your spring flush, just come in, give it a haircut. You can even like grab it up like a ponytail and cut it that way and you will have lots of blooms pollinators in early spring they are so happy to see these sweet little blue flowers um, just go nuts over it but your sedums will be a little bit taller your cat's pajamas is going to be lower so you also have that effect of height lots of fun make sure you go and you check out that easyscape website because like i said they have got tons of different scenarios in the gardens for you they really are trying to constantly think or what are problems that gardeners run into what is a solution how can we help you and these plants have been handpicked to go together not only for height and texture and color but bloom time a lot of thought went into these plants um, so we really hope that it will be very helpful to you um, but as always thank you so much for gardening with creekside y'all have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video bye friends